Sorry, folks. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Assemblyman Rory Lansman, uh, and I'm joined here by former Mayor Ed Koch. And uh, we're here because four years after the collapse of Lehman Brothers, just a short walk from here, precipitated a global financial meltdown that threw millions of Americans out of work. Far too little has changed. Epitomizing this failure is financial giant J.P. Morgan Chase's $2 billion loss stemming from the same kind of reckless, speculative trading activity that fueled the 2008 economic meltdown. This happened even as J.P. Morgan's CEO, Jamie Dimon, was the most outspoken opponent of the Dodd-Frank financial reform law, a law which, if implemented, would likely have banned the proprietary trading that caused the company's $2 billion loss to the Volcker Rule. Simply put, the Securities and Exchange Commission and Congress are putting the American economy at risk by failing to reform Wall Street and hold wrongdoers accountable. Two-thirds of the rules that Dodd-Frank tasked federal agencies with implementing have yet to be promulgated. These include the Volcker Rule, which prohibits banks from proprietary trading on their own behalf, and CEO say on pay accountability standards, which among other things would require corporations to publicize the ratio of the CEO's compensation to the company's median employee pay. And as you can see from this chart here, that was prepared by a very prominent law firm, Davis Polk, in all, the Dodd-Frank deadlines missed include 78% of regulations that were to be promulgated by bank regulators, 32% of regulations to be promulgated by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, 77% of regulations to be promulgated by the SEC, and 82% of regulations to be promulgated by other agencies. Those are the regulations that Dodd-Frank required and which have already had their deadlines missed. The neither admit nor deny settlements pushed by the SEC and other federal agencies have drawn objections from at least three federal courts, including the Southern District of New York, where Jed Raycliffe uh, recently refused to accept a settlement with Citigroup that would have paid back Citigroup's uh, defrauded investors pennies on the dollar. One of the first bills that I would introduce as a member of Congress would be the Corporate Accountability Act, requiring government agencies seeking a court's approval of a settlement to establish that the proposed settlement is fair, reasonable, adequate, and in the public interest based on material facts admitted to by the defendant. The legalized kickback scheme allows an, an exchange, a securities exchange, to give so-called rebates to brokers for placing their customers' trades through the exchange. This creates conflicts of interest for brokers who ought to be placing customers' office orders based on which exchange offers the best price, not which exchange offers the broker the best rebate. The cost to investors of this scheme is estimated to be as high as $5 million a year. And the practice is eerily similar to the yield spread premiums used by mortgage banks in the run-up to the subprime lending crisis, where the mortgage banks paid brokers to shepherd loans to that particular bank, regardless of whether it paid a, 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 a charge a, a homeowner a higher rate. And the tilted legal playing field against investors in favor of banks and corporations began in 1995 with the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act and culminated in 1998 with legislation that Congress passed which basically banned state class actions. It's very important to understand the 2008 financial meltdown that shook the global economy and threw millions of Americans out of work wasn't an accident. And predictable consequence of deliberately lax regulations and oversight, and a casino culture that champions speculation for speculation's sake, securing the knowledge that defrauded investors had almost no meaningful legal recourse to recover their losses. And we're here today because very little has changed. So, in light of the JP Morgan Chase fiasco, we're calling on the SEC and Congress to get serious about reforming Wall Street, including the swift and full implementation of Dodd-Frank's many overdue regulations, including the Volcker Rule, prohibiting the SEC from accepting neither admit nor deny settlements that obscure accountability and pay investors pennies on the dollar, prohibiting kickbacks from exchanges to 
and brokers in the form of so-called rebates that cost investors over uh, $5 million a year, and leveling the legal playing field so investors have a fair opportunity to recover their losses. Is it any wonder that investors have been fleeing the stock market in droves, as the New York Times reported recently, causing four consecutive years of decreased trading volume? These accountability measures and transparency reforms are finally adopted and implemented. Investor confidence will flourish, and we'll have a stock market that's more likely to grow the economy than to record. With that, it's my great pleasure to introduce the former mayor of New York, Mayor Ed Cox. I'm here because for the last uh, several years, I, along with other people, uh, raised the question, why is it no one is uh, being criminally pursued of the uh, major corporations and the CEOs who are responsible uh, for so much damage that was done to the American public as a result of the uh, Great Recession? I will make a point. I believe in capitalism. I have most of my own money invested in the stock market. And I've done reasonably well. And I've uh, basically recovered from it. But I also uh, believe uh, that we cannot have a stock market that's unregulated. And we know that the banks there are lots of good banks, and I'm not uh, suggesting uh, that there are huge numbers of uh, uh, criminal culprits running around, but I am suggesting there are some. And I am suggesting uh, that uh, they be pursued criminally. I know that in the last uh, State of the Union address, uh, President Obama said he was appointing First, he said he was directing the uh, Attorney General to form a special unit to look into the skullduggery and to protect people criminally. He said it specifically. I'm to read it to you. It's very short. This is what he said in his address. And tonight, I'm asking my Attorney General to create a special unit of federal prosecutors and leading state attorneys general to expand our investigation into the abusive lending and packaging of risky mortgages that led to the housing crisis. And then there was applause in the Congress. And then he went on to say, this new unit will hold accountable those who broke the law, speed assistance to homeowners, and help turn the page on an era of recklessness that hurt many Americans. I haven't seen the prosecution. I don't get it. What's happening? And uh, again, I don't know what happened. Uh, but the reason that we uh, decided to do it here is because Jamie Dimon is leading the fight with the regulation. <laughs> now, um, in a way, what happened uh, here at J.P. Morgan has effectively done him in as a leader. He's no longer uh, the hotshot. To apologize, and so uh, he's no longer leading that fight. But they'll get somebody else. And the problem for the public is that the Congress is in the pocket of uh, the financial industry. I'm for a healthy Wall Street. They pay 30 percent of the taxes in this city. My investments make me financially secure. But that doesn't mean that they have a laissez-faire permit. And that doesn't mean that the Congress should 
simply because they're given hundreds of millions of dollars in financial campaign contributions that they should turn their backs on the needs for regulation. More regulations are required. I'll close with this. There was an, a, a, a documentary uh, last week uh, on Channel 13 that related uh, to uh, the financial crisis. It was a brilliant, best documentary I've ever seen. And there was something there that really shook me up, and that was the reference to the Secretary of the Treasury, Cater. He poured billions to AIG. And whereas in the private sector they would have required the people who were going to get some compensation by way of insurance to take what the program referred to as the street name, a haircut, share in the laws, he, the Secretary of the Treasury, insisted that AIG, with taxpayers' money, pay 100% on the dollar. Now, if that isn't nuts, I don't know what is. So who's looking out for the broker? I don't think the Congress is. I'm really ashamed of what uh, many of the people uh, have done who come from New York. They have not stood up. Now, there is no question but that New York legislators should be assisting Wall Street proper people, just as they assist any other constituent. But that doesn't mean they're supposed to stand there and protect criminality. So now, we'll take the question. Um, Questions? So, Mayor Cox, you, you probably know Jamie Dimon. You probably met him? I mean, if I met him, uh, as I probably did, I had no conversation. I don't know. Uh, uh, I understand he's a very nice guy. I understand he's a brilliant guy. I understand also that he's very ashamed of what's happening. I've had a number of people behind me while I'm standing here listening to you who work in the financial industry around here. They think that uh, you and Mr. Lanceman don't know anything about what happens on Wall Street and that you're just um, maybe... Well, Jamie interesting? Uh, but why did Jamie Diamond apologize? And what we're talking about is, uh, why did he apologize? Because they did something wrong, right? And secondly, um, just uh, uh, go back to that uh, Channel 13 PBS documentary. Four hours, best documentary I've ever seen in my whole life. It takes this industry apart. And all of the books that have been written, and nobody has been prosecuted. Uh, some kid steals a bike, he goes to jail. Some Wall Streeter steals millions of dollars, he becomes a leader. Fair. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg yesterday said that if you're going to have a no-risk banking system, you're not going to have an economy. Listen, I don't uh, expect that uh, Wall Street is not going to have losses. I don't, I'm not really interested in stupid losses. Believe me, based on my experience in the past, if they say it's two billion, it'll come out more. But I'm not even, that's not what I'm talking about. Didn't the president say in his State of the Union he was going to have a special unit for him to look into the chicanery? Maybe he did. But where's the, uh, what they, what was that, uh, Mundell? Uh, where's the meat? Where's the beef? <laughs> Do you, do you think that the mayor has blinders on because he comes out? I'm not criticizing him. The mayor is very protective of the city of New York. I think we are very lucky to have Mayor Bloomberg, one of the great mayors in the history of New York City. And he is worried <coughs> about the fact that Wall Street, which pays 30% of all the taxes that the city gets, uh, will somehow or other suffer. I don't want Wall Street to suffer. I mean, but uh, protecting those people who engage in criminality, that's not my job. My job is to say to the Congress, it's your job to put them in jail. Mr. Mayor, uh, do you see the...
appeal of the last steel as being the genesis of this? And if so, do you believe that Graham Leach Blackley should be rescinded and Glass Steagall reinforced? Let me, let me say this. Um, the, um, repeal is subject to the law. I want to describe it. I don't pretend to be an expert. Based on what I have read, I believe uh, that uh, we should go back to the separation of the place. That's a question uh, for others to do our experiments that I'm talking about criminality. That's what I'm talking about. Assembling the last for the same question I asked the mayor. Do you think that Mr. Spielberg is uh, blinded by his close ties to Wall Street in terms of his continuing to stand against tough regulation? I, I also I'm not going to criticize Mayor Bloomberg, um, but I will say that anybody who thinks that we don't have a serious problem on Wall Street, four years after the financial meltdown, we still see some of the same uh, very reckless and speculative activity going on, where the, the main reform that came out of the Wall Street meltdown, Dodd-Frank, has been largely uh, not implemented. And, and what has not been implemented would stop some of the activity that we're observing today. I mean, the irony of, of Jamie Dimon being the leader in the fight against the vocal rule, but it's the vocal rule that almost certainly would have prevented this $2 billion probably to turn into a $3 billion loss by the time it's all done. Um, it shouldn't be lost on, on anyone, whether it's, it's Mayor Bloomberg or, or, or members of Congress who have an obligation to oversee the, the financial industry and promulgate uh, laws and, and the SEC promulgate regulations that will protect investors, and most importantly, protect our economy. Listen, fortunately, J.P. Morgan is a big enough company that it can absorb this $2 billion, $3 billion dollar loss. Um, but that same activity is going on in smaller firms that um, could bring that firm under. And then, as we saw, as, as Lehman Brothers you know, started the, the cascade of collapse that, that, that became known as, as the 2008 meltdown, um, could lead to very, very serious consequences for our entire economy. Booker will not have prevented What happened? Well, the, you know, there's a debate about whether or not the trading that was engaged in was true hedging. You know, whether or not you're hedging uh, the, the, the magnitude of the trade that was made, the, 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 the compensation that was made. You know, Joe Nocera had a great article, I think it was in yesterday's time, okay? The, the, the person, I don't want to single anyone out, all right? But the individual who was paid $14 million uh, last year, he wasn't paid that to hedge bets. He was paid that to make profits, to take risks. And that's fine, except there's a problem when those risks uh, jeopardize the firm, which in turn can jeopardize the entire uh, um, financial market. And I would bear to also remind you that, you know, to a certain extent, J.P. Morgan is playing with taxpayers and depositors' money. And that's something that should be very, very seriously considered in terms of whether or not J.P. Morgan should be allowed to engage in this extraordinarily risky behavior, while at the same time holding depositors' money and being the beneficiary of a lot of taxpayer risk. Mayor Koch, you obviously were a young person when we were living through the Great Depression. You were here I was when seven. We, we were here <laughs> when yes. I was. Yeah. 1931, I was seven. You were here obviously during the 87 crash. You've been here through 2008. What do you think is different about today than these other um, episodes that you've been through, financial episodes in your life? Firstly, I want to. I don't pretend to be starry in here, but I know uh, that if there is criminality, and I don't know anybody who doesn't believe that there wasn't criminality on the part of some. I'm not saying pervading the whole industry, but not a single CEO of any major corporation has been pursued criminally. What the hell's going on? President in his State of the Union uh, address said he wants the Attorney General to look into it. Has he? Have you seen any uh, announcement that anybody's being pursued?